shifting tracks. Few days back, we told you about the Congress testimony of heads of three top universities on genocide of Jews. Before we give you an update on this, first, let's re revisit the disastrous testimony where presidents of Harvard, MIT and Pennsylvania universities were grilled over growing anti-Semitism on the college campuses. Let's take a look. Does M at MIT, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment, yes or no? If targeted at individuals not making public statements. Yes or no? Calling for the genocide of Jews does have, not constitute bullying and harassment? I have not heard calling for the genocide for Jews on our campus. But you've heard chants for intifada. I've heard chants which can be anti-Semitic depending on the context when calling for the elimination of the Jewish people. So those would not be according to the MIT's code of conduct or rules? That would be um, investigated of, as, as harassment if pervasive and severe. Ms. McGill, at Penn, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment, yes. I, I am asking specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. That is not bullying or harassment. This is the easiest question to answer yes, Ms. McGill. So is your if testimony it, that it, you will not answer yes? If it... Uh, is if the, yes speech or no. becomes, if the speech becomes conduct, it can be harassment, yes. Conduct meaning committing the act of genocide? The speech is not harassment? This is unacceptable, Ms. McGill. I'm gonna give you one more opportunity for the world to see your answer. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's code of conduct when it comes to bullying and harassment? Yes or no? It can be harassment. The answer is yes. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's targeted at Jewish students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? Do you understand that dehumanization is part of anti-Semitism? I will ask you one more time. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it and crosses is it anti into conduct. Rhetoric? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation, that is actionable conduct, and we do take action. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. Now, Claudine Gay, who was the president of Harvard University, has apologized for her testimony. The apology comes amid widespread condemnation. In an interview with the school's student newspaper, Claudine Gay said, and I quote, I'm sorry, words matter. Gay told the Harvard student paper that she regretted what she said. She further added, when words amplify distress and pain, I don't know how you could feel anything but regret. Now it remains to be seen whether the MIT and the Pennsylvania University presidents will follow suit or not. All right, viewers, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the broadcast. Meanwhile, news and updates continue on the other side. Keep watching, Mirror Now. Thank you.